What's up guys, my name is Jared Kaufman. I'm a framer here in Colorado. And today I wanted to talk about something that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about, which is what the best speed squares are. It's an essential tool for each of us as a carpenter. Um, each one of these I've used somewhat, only one of them I haven't actually used for an extended period of time. But other than that, I've used other models for weeks on end. So I just wanted to kind of go over them and uh, yeah, just say what I like about each one. And I should also mention, I'm not going to list the exact prices of these because each of these companies is like still changing things and innovating and prices are going up and down. And I don't want to mislead you because this video will be around a lot longer than any of what the current prices are. So anyways, I'll start with the first one. This is the square I've used the longest out of each of these. This is the Johnny Square by Johnson. When I got mine, I think I got it on Amazon for like seven bucks. It's super great. It hits all the marks of everything you need for a square. And best of all, it was just cheap. I think the one I had had a bottle opener here too, which I've never used it, but it was kind of cool. Um, cool things about it that I liked was it had scribes every quarter inch all the way up to five and a half, which is pretty cool. Five and a half is the size of a two by six, of course. So if I wanted to rip a two by four and a half, inch and three quarter, slide it down, worked great. This one's nice too because the degree marks are easy to read. On the gray one, they were a little harder to read. Another feature that you'll see, I'm pretty sure every single one of these squares has it. Actually, not every single one of these squares has it. This little mark here, which is used for marking bird's mouths, if I was to do, a, let's say, a 512 rafter here, and I needed to mark a bird's mouth, I can line that up with my mark there. Describe it like that, and it gives me a square line because obviously I can't line my square up with it like that. And it's just a nice little perk. Another thing that I like, it has a pivot notch right here. It's just a little half circle there. I think actually the reason that I do like it is when I'm laying out green plate bolts on foundation, it's something that can like hook it onto the center of the bolt and automatically center it as opposed to eyeballing it. Another thing worth noting on these squares, it you can write on it with your pencil really easy whatever your measurements are, if I could spell, you can write it on there and it's uh, you know, you can erase it with your thumb. You've got a little list there. So there we go. First square, Johnny square. It's got measurements here as well, up to four inches, which is great. Um, if you're laying out walls, it's got it noted for three and a half. You can mark your channels, two by four notches, whatever. Anyways, that's, that's the first one. Next one, tried and true classic is the Swanson square. Since that one's the Johnny square, we call this the Swanee square. It's just, I don't know, it's the way we do it. This is their second generation actually. Um, I think they call it like the pro or something. They changed a few things with it which are actually really awesome. So what they did is they now have scribes every eighth inch. I don't remember exactly what it was before but it was only every quarter and I think it stopped at three and a half. You couldn't scribe past that. Now you can scribe all the way up to five and three quarters. And it's like I said, it's every eighth inch, not just every quarter. Um, another thing that I really like, this mark or this piece here used to always be at inch and a half. And now they added this little triangle right here. You can now get all the way down to one inch, which is great because a lot of you guys are using rim joist, which is either inch and a quarter or inch and an eighth. You can either mark inch and a quarter or just eyeball between quarter and one. And then you know you're at inch and an eighth. This also has the same notch on the pivot, which I like, and marks up to four inches as well on the side. And other than that, all the features are pretty much the same as, uh, as what the Johnny had as well. It's uh, super easy to read, super durable. This is almost one of the most durable squares without spending a ridiculous amount of money. So that's super great. The reason why I like when the inch and a half has a notch like this is because a lot of times for laying out walls, we need to mark individual studs for multiple stud packs rather than just scribing and then marking inch and a half and adding. If I were to do that over and over, it's two, three, four, and measure from end to end, I've got six and an eighth. But if I come from this side and I instead line up my pencil line with it and go like that, By the time I get to the end, you can see I'm about an eighth shorter than the other one, but I'm exactly six inches on. That's why I like being able to see the pencil line rather than just putting it in line with this. Next square on the list, this is the Trig Jig. 
this is my second one and their second generation too. They've been innovating and doing cool different designs and whatnot. Um, but uh, the first one my wife got for me and it was awesome and I loved it. What's new about this one compared to the other two is it has a level vial in the heel, which is super useful um, for finding pitches. Um, you can also just use it as a little torpedo level if you need to check something short. You can do that, um, and same thing if you need to check it for plumb, you can just use the side of the square. If you need to check something 45 degrees, you can use the angle of the square and figure all that out. So what I like with this one is the level vial is visible when it's flat like this. Most of the other square brands um, don't do that, not all of them, which you'll see. Um, but that's really nice. I also like it has every eighth inch scribes up to five and a half. It does have like your rafter conversion on there as well, which is nice if you use it. I never do because I use my calculator more often than not. Same thing with the inch and a half that the Swanson liked. This has the same thing, but it actually compensates for which type of marking tool you use, whether I'm using a fine point marker, pencil, or sorry, yeah, fine point pen, pencil, or a marker there. There's a different offset right there, but either way, I can also reference my inch and a half mark on the bottom. I really like that. That might be one of my favorites, but I still like that the Swanson goes all the way to inch and a quarter. This one doesn't go to inch and a quarter. Um, so, you know, marking rim joist will be a little bit trickier with this square. So this square, another thing that they did that was a very intentional design is the measurements right here are all recessed just slightly. I'm not sure if you can tell or not. But what's nice about that is no matter how many times I slide this back and forth down a board, those will never get worn out and the engraving will never get worn through because it's recessed. So it's not actually making contact with the wood. Um, none of the other squares have that. Yeah, like a stamped or milled engravings on squares like these, those are a lot more durable as opposed to laser engraved. Um, but having this be recessed is also a great solution to that. And then another cool one is you'll notice there's a third rafters mark here, and then it's three and a half, five and a half, seven and a quarter, nine and a quarter, which is your two by four through two by, two by 10 sizes. Basically what this does, if you were to take each of one of those pieces of lumber and divide it into three, you could use that scribe and it would divide it into perfect thirds. If you needed to get three rips out of one board, you can use those scribes and be exact there because it's a decimal, it doesn't line up exactly on an eighth or a quarter. That's the trig jig. Oh wait, I want that to stay there. Next up, this one's new released is uh, the stiletto square. This one is pretty cool. I think they're calling it the bomber square because of this design here. Kind of looks like the whatever stealth bomber. They make ones with a level vial in it. I don't, I don't have it, Landon has it, but I will say it's probably the clearest and easiest to read out of all the level vials, and it is also the largest and probably the most accurate out of all the squares. Things that are nice with this one, um, scribes up to, it looks like five and seven eighths up at the top. You know, marks on the bottom, which are easier to see and easy indents for those. I kind of like too, it's got, you've got scribes this way too, in, for easy, quicker reading, three quarter, half inch. Any spot on the square is being utilized for something, which is nice, very similar to the Martinez. Another thing I liked with the bird's mouth marks, you'll notice there's two lines on it rather than just one. The bigger one is a little larger so it can get you more accurate, but the smaller one is actually perfectly set where it's three and a half inches to the 45 mark. So if you needed to mark a three and a half inch bird's mouth, you could line it up with 45 and mark it and you know your size there. Same thing here, this one's got an easy inch and three quarter mark, which is great, easy inch and a half mark. And something that is nice with this stiletto one, they slightly machined it back so it's not exactly an inch and a half wide, so that way you won't get that same compounding error that the other squares can get. This one also has my little pivot thing that I like. Um, this is by far the heaviest out of these, even compared to the steel Swanson. This one is aluminum, but it's, uh, it's still quite a bit heavy, and it's about seven and three eighths long, but if I were to measure to the outside of this, it'd probably be almost eight inches long overall. So definitely the biggest one of these, if that's a drawback. Another thing that I love about this square, this is actually something that on, on my original Johnny square, I added this in. It's got the marks on the heel. I think I did exactly this too, inch and a half, three, three and a half, I stopped there. But it marks all the way up to six inches, which is great. 
Reasons why that's great is you can measure heights like this, or sometimes if you're sliding, you might be looking at a weird dimension, you can still mark it like that. But I like it, my laser level marks horizontally at three inches, so I could set this on the ground and know exactly you know, how level it is, up or down. Big win for this square, plus being black, it reads the green lasers really well. So next one is the smart square. These guys are really cool guys. I've talked with them quite a bit, told them you know, some feedback and things on it. Um, and honestly, I just love their attitude about the industry in general, but I also do love their square. So this is the only one of these squares that mechanically moves and changes its shape. So that is a feature, but it also can be a drawback at the same time. So it's just something to keep in mind. You'll notice there's two sets of dimensions going each direction. So if I have my square with the heel like this, I'm pulling from there, I'm reading these numbers, one, two, three and a half. But if I switched and went like this, now I'm reading the other dimension, one, two, three and a half. That can be confusing sometimes because if I look at that, I also see two and a half. So I have to keep in mind which direction I'm offsetting, but usually it helps that I just know that this is bigger than two and a half, so that helps me default to the proper measurement. This square has two level vials in it, one for each direction. I believe they might be working on a new design too, which would incorporate a single level vial that could work in three dimensions. Um, another plus to this one, you can fold it flat, mark it square like this. Bird's mouths, you know, got a lot easier. Squaring off of things, marking complicated notches and whatnot, all gets easier with this. This has uh, scribes every quarter inch up to six inches, which is actually the longest scribe out of all these squares, which is pretty cool. Um, I love the side dimensions. Again, I love that it's an uh, inch and a half is a mark at the bottom. It's not just the thing here, although I, this is also good to use for your inch and a half marks. All in all, this one's good. If you end up switching your layout back and forth a lot, it can get a little annoying. But I say there's always a, a certain process for this square where it really does come in handy. And again, it has, with the full measurements on the heels, you can set it like this and you can measure your height off the floor. Everyone knows if you put your square like this, you're gonna be reading to the top of this, not to the bottom, so you can't accurately set it like that and read that measurement. All right, next square. This is probably the most popular and most coveted speed square. I know it's not a speed square, it's a speed square. But uh, this is the Martinez square. This is the titanium version. They make an aluminum one as well, which we have somewhere around here. The, really the main difference is that this one has the blade wrench in it and it's slightly, uh, slightly more durable, obviously. This is the only square that I haven't personally owned. This is Derek's who works with me. So things that I like with this one, there's, I mean, there's so much to it, obviously. It's the same thing with the stiletto. Every single spot in here is, is being used intentionally. You've got your, quick angle scribes for 22 and a half, 45. You've got your inch and a half notch here. Same thing, they kind of machined slightly over, so your pencil should be pretty accurate on that. These here being notched out for scribes like that, honestly to me is less about scribes and more about visualizing the pencil line, because you can kind of say, oh, I want to go to right or left side of the line, and that just helps do that a little bit quicker. I personally don't use the blade wrenches on the squares, even though I have one in my other square. I use it, I have one on my cat's paw, and I use that a lot more often. This is another square that you can't mark inch and a quarter with or inch and an eighth, which is, you know, unfortunate. I think that is the big win of Swanson over literally every single one of these squares, um, because inch and a quarter is actually a really common material thickness that we use, and that's just a Slight bummer, but again, it's not the end of the world. Worst case scenario, you can flip your square, mark inch and a quarter, and you're good to go there. Probably the most durable of all the squares just because of the material use. It's titanium. Um, it's got a nice, thick, machined aluminum heel and the level vial there. With the level vial, it's easy to read. Um, only downside is you can't read it from the top in this position. You can still look from the side and see it there, but that's really the only drawback there. This also does have a bottle opener, like the good old classic Johnny Square. I probably should also mention all these level vials, just like any level, if you ever want to replace a vial. You see all these machine screws. All of these, except for the Smart Square, have replaceable vials, although I'm sure they would probably service that if, they, if you needed them replaced. Um, but yeah, these all are replaceable if you need them to be, which is good. 
Um, although if you need to replace your level vial, you probably need to replace the whole square because that means it probably took a serious beating. Only real drawback to this square, if you ask me, other than the inch and a quarter thing, is the engravings are kind of a gray and then the, the metal itself is a gray as well. So it can be hard to see the engravings in certain lighting. That is probably the one advantage to the aluminum one. The only drawback to the aluminum one is it doesn't have the blade wrench. But as I mentioned, I've never used those anyways. Um, but that's what's nice about this one is it's black and then it's engraved and there's a lot more contrast to those markings so it's a lot easier to read. So that is actually a big plus of the aluminum, not to mention it's a little cheaper if you don't feel like spending an insane amount of money on the other one. All right, last but not least, this is the Squeejig Square. Right off the bat, what I love about this one, it has a level vial, but it also has a normal sized heel, which is, according to me and according to anyone I know who's seen this, they, it's a big win um, because this is, you know, a thicker heel sitting in your bags. It's just, there's not many pros to it and there's a couple cons depending on your tool bags they might uh, it might get caught easier and fall out this traditionally is pretty much the exact same size stay as the Swanson square it's a little bit longer as you can see but I would consider that a pro as well um, but the heel pretty much the exact same size as the Swanson but it is also the same thickness, which I think they did intentionally because a lot of guys use these to space deck boards. Another huge pro, it's the markings on the heel. Goes all the way up to seven and a half. Actually, it goes up to about seven and three quarter on this side. Um, again, that's great for reading level with your laser level. This is replaceable and serviceable if you need it to be. They do come in custom colors. They're not all this color. I wanted this color because it's, I like black and yellow or gold in this case. They've got the scribe lines, which these are completely isolated, which is really nice because anyone scribing with a square has experience where you're going down and then your pencil jumps out and goes into the other notch. Only drawback of this one is that that forces you to have a notch only every quarter, which to me doesn't really matter because I don't, I don't necessarily need it to be every single eighth inch. I end up using my tape measure for more accurate scribes or chalk line for anything that's a factory edge or straight. Um, this also does have a blade wrench as well, like the Martinez. Again, I've never used it. It's in perfect condition, but someday I'll use it. This also has your bird's mouth notch there, measurements up to four inches. Again, you start at inch and a half, so you can't mark anything less than that off of that dimension. Yeah. The square does also have inch and a half, three and a half, and five and a half noted on the edge. Those are really common measurements that framers use, as you'll know if you are a framer. All right, well, in conclusion, I'll just go over the pros and cons of each square. First up is the Johnny Square Pro, super easy to write measurements on it. Uh, quarter inch scribes up to five and a half. Uh, inch and a half marks, easy to read. And of course, it's super cheap. That's a huge pro. Next up, Swanson, same thing, cheap, reliable, marks down to one inch, which is really nice. Marks every eighth inch up to five and three quarters, which is great. You can write your measurements on it, but it's a little bit hard to see them. I think that would be probably the only con with this. Both of these squares also have the little pivot notches that I like. Trig jig. Pros are, it's super accurate. You've got your eighth inch scribes up to five and five eighths. You've got your compensated marking tool things for inch and a half. Um, you can mark up to three and three quarters on the heel side. You can write your dimensions on the heel and it, uh, rub, erase it with your thumb if you want to. And also it's recessed engraving so it won't rub off like some others might. Um, and cons, uh, I don't remember, did we have any cons for this? We didn't really, did we? Oh yeah, uh, Pro, it has a level which is easy to read in all positions. And cons, there's not really any cons with this other than that it doesn't have measurements on the heel. Smart Square, pros are scribe lines every quarter inch up to six inches, which is the longest scribe out of all the squares. You've got two level vials, depending on which one you would want to use. Um, you have the ability to rotate and change your heel depending on what you want to do. The ability to measure like this or like this could be used with the laser level as I've mentioned. 
that those are all pros. You can write your dimensions on this pretty easily. Only con I would say is since this is a moving piece, it is more potential to wear down and need to be replaced or repaired. Stiletto square, pros, super easy and to see and write your measurements on it. Measurements on the heel, huge plus. Stiletto does make a square with a level as well. Um, I just don't have the level model, but the level vial is bright and easy to read and it seems pretty durable. Bottom side of the heel marks up to four and a half, scribes up to five and three quarters. It does have the pivot notch that I like. Every spot on this is being utilized, inch and a half, inch and three quarter, one inch, three quarters. Martinez square, pros are scribes every eighth inch up to five and a half inches. Um, and the scribes are deeper, so your pencil won't slide out as easily, which is really nice. Again, every, every square inch of this square is utilized for something. These markings here make it really easy to accurately do plate layout. Um, blade wrench, durable material, level vial. Level vial can't be seen in this position, which isn't a huge deal. And really, that and the fact that the markings are a little hard to see in certain lighting, I would say is the only downside. The squee jig, pros are isolated scribes up to five and three quarters, blade wrench, slimmer heel, full markings on the heel, which I really love. You can't mark less than inch and a half unless you use the top of the heel, so I wouldn't quite call that a con. Level vial is easy to read in this position, and you can write your measurements on this and erase it with your fingers real easily. Only con to this square, I would say, is that the isolated scribes mean you can only mark every quarter inch. That basically means if they had gone with an eighth inch design, maybe that would have been better, but I think I might like this better. All right, so that's all I've got for the squares. The last thing I'm gonna say is if I had to pick one of these squares, which one would I pick? I didn't rehearse this at all, I have no idea. The square that I'm gonna put back in my tool bags, it's either gonna be the trig jig or the squee jig, I think, personally. And honestly, it might just depend on the day for me because I really like both of these squares. Maybe it's just the colors, but either way, that's what I would pick. Hopefully this is beneficial to you. If you have any questions or suggestions or if any new squares have come out since I posted this, let me know. Maybe we'll talk about those. But yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> I guess we're good to go.